I think the New York Declaration on Forests uh, is a very important step because it does capture a lot of that innovation that, that's coming forward and it has great sign-on. In a few years with a new set of principles and criteria it could have sharper teeth on, on deforestation. Um, I think the, the big innovation that's starting to catch traction is not formally captured in the uh, summit outcomes except through the announcement of the Rio Branco Declaration. It's just is this idea that we start to define success and sustainability at the scale of entire territories and not at the, the scale of the farm or the mill. And if we can achieve that, then the world of the private sector, which is all about risk aversion and wondering if the people who are growing products and selling them to them are, are doing clearing or involved in bad labor practices, to a, 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 broad, a more a proactive, positive agenda of rural development. But I think that the New York Port, uh, Declaration on Forests is a big deal. Well, obviously we have the Forest Declaration, which is an, a very important document, and it's supported not only by countries, but also by private corporations, by uh, jurisdictions at the province level, by civil society, and by indigenous peoples. And, and that's, uh, this broad support is really something good that has come out from, from the Climate Week. Of course, I welcome the declaration. Uh, as most UN declarations, uh, it's sufficiently vague to accommodate all tastes. Uh, but of course, it's in the, in the, wrong, in the right direction. And certainly Brazil uh, is probably the country which will contribute a lot to achievement of that. But you didn't sign it. Well, Brazil did not sign for diplomatic and, uh, let's say, uh, legal restrictions because it said uh, zero, 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 zero uh, deforestation and Brazilian law today uh, allows for a certain a small amount of deforestation. So the diplomats were not certain Brazil had the power to sign something that would go against national domestic legislation. It's only for that. Uh, however, Brazil's intent is really getting to zero deforestation uh, soon. I think the UN declaration uh, goes a long way in recognizing forests as a major target you know, for conservation and, and uh, for climate change mitigation in the coming 10 years and 20 years. Great step forward. It puts forest which has always been on the marginal lands side of the equation and seen as, as you know, as, as not part of the productive agricultural economy as giving attention. On the other hand, it does just that. It seems to uh, put force on the conservation side more than on the management side. I don't think it highlights enough the economic potential uh, that force offer. So while it's a, a very important step forward, I think it missed the opportunity of uh, bringing a more clear message that forests are also central to, to the economy more broadly, are central to many of the other um, you know, underlying environmental and, and ecosystem services that sustain cities like New York. So force cuts across all those, those functions and the UN Declaration recognizes it as important. I think we need to continue to move in that way and continue to call attention to the potential of force uh, for the broader economic impact and, and economic improvement of, of many communities. I think there are a lot of positive elements in the, the UN Declaration. Um, the, the, the emissions reductions and, and the deforestation reductions targets are, are very positive. The, objective to try and eliminate deforestation, um, to engage with the private sector is something that's, that's new, it's useful, and I think that's one of the things we've seen here at, at the, throughout the, the climate week here in New York, is a private sector engagement is at a much, much higher level than it has been in the past. It's, uh, um, we haven't seen the, the level of commitment or the level of representation of the private sector in these discussions that we ha we've seen here in New York this week. So, you know, CEOs of, of major companies coming, not, not you know, lower level officials from these companies coming, but, but and making real engagements and, and, and real commitments to, to doing things, things that can actually be verified later on and followed up on. So I think that, that's something that's new. Um, I think that the, the declaration is a, is a little bit short in that it, it really focuses on forests as an entity 
and not as forest as an element within the landscape. So it's really all about forest and, and it sort of misses on the connections. So I mean forests are, are related to other things that are happening in the landscapes and, and they're related to other things that are happening in the economic landscape that, that seems to be a, a bit missing in, in what the declaration is saying. So I, th I think that there's a lot of positive elements in it but, but the, the, the shortcomings are significant enough to, to, to you know, actually warrant some comment um, uh, on this and try and move this along. You know, Peter Holmgren in his comments talked about, you know, setting the forest declaration, setting the, the, the agricultural declaration side by side, you have a much more compelling, and, and finding the links between those, you have a much more compelling agenda. And I think that that, that really is the case. To, to integrate what you want to, what, what the world wants to achieve with forests, integrate that with what they're trying to achieve in agriculture is essential to actually achieving the objectives, but also essential to making sure that you don't work at cross purposes by, by dividing up what you're trying to do in these different sectors and treating them as separate sectors. We actually need to be bringing them closer together.